is everybody doing out there on YouTube? Dave in Kentucky. Um, just did a video yesterday, um, but thought I'd do another one today. I wanted to use another uh, razor that it uh, came with that group of eight or ten uh, old ones. This is a her brand safety razor. I'll try to get it where you can read it, see their logo anyway. Uh, very simple box for this one. It actually tilts back instead of just coming up and off. Very plain inside. Uh, if there was any writing up here, it's faded and gone. In that box came the razor, the stropping mechanism, <clears throat> and this used what they called a thin flat blade. It had their name on it. Uh, her brand. Yep, poor lighting. Anyway, there you go. Has like these drop ears, um, but cutting a uh, or despining a gem blade uh, was able to get one in there. It has a, um, you might say, a tray. It goes up on either side here, so you slide it back in there. This is the style where you have to tighten up and the screw holds the blade up against the head. So um, it took some finagling to get it to where roughly where the blade, original blade sat and then screw that up in there to hold it in place and make sure it was straight across. I do notice that this head, because it's just this um, kind of like a spring, it's uh, it's down here and then wraps up and around. It it looks a little cockeyed. I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera. But uh, the blade is straight along with the open comb. And uh, this is just twisted a little. Some of that may have to do with putting pressure on it when you tighten it up. But anyway, another thing I was going to cover is I appreciate all the comments. Uh, I've got some new subscribers up to 207, 43 away from doing that uh, Sterling set giveaway. I don't do social media because I'm not trying to really grow the channel, but I'm just kind of having fun with it. So if you want to share with friends or whatever, <clears throat> get some others to come by, that's great. Um, and that will get you closer to getting uh, your goal. <laughs> anyway, Joao, and I'm probably butchering the name, but looked it up and that's what YouTube told me how it's pronounced. Either Brazil or Portuguese. Really appreciate you and your comments as well. He'd asked me about, he said, uh, I seem to get a consistent lather. I'm a over lather or over loader on the brush. I've learned over the years that I've got more soap than I'll ever get through. I keep giving soap away to friends on the forum and they keep sending soaps to me. And so I can't get it reduced down to what I'd like to be. <clears throat> I've learned over the years that putting more, I'm never going to go through it all. So just put as much, you know, I'll load for 45 seconds uh, to a minute uh, get enough on that brush, and uh, then it's easier to get a consistency. But he asked, he says, are there any soaps in particular that I have trouble getting a lather from? And I was at work, so I couldn't think of. And I just now came in here and I looked, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, the um, Strop Shop. Um, I have one left. I just love the scent, and it held on to the Russian tea. It is one of the first ones, if not the first artisan uh, soap made for shaving out there. And uh, let me wet my face and start lathering. <clears throat> Did a jibber jabber in here. And then I'll show you the soap I'm using today. We've got Stuart putting him to work already loaded up. I can get a decent lather with this drop shop. It's usually a thinner one. It breaks uh, the water fairly quick. And this that I'm using right now is probably the one I've had the most trouble with, so I thought I'd give it a shot today. And I don't remember if the trouble was getting a lather. That did not dissipate. Or if it was just very drying. But I loved the scent of this one. And they come in a metal, a small metal tin, or they did, from West Coast Shaving. This was their campfire. 
one of the best campfire scents, if not the best, that was made. And uh, I put it in a little small sterling tub. Get a little more water in the soap here. And I can't, I've not used it in a while because I have uh, well, gifted to me one from, um, oh, who makes it? The Woodsman. Who makes it? Come on, tell me. Let me grab it. Made in Nebraska. And I don't see the name. Kiln burnt Swedish pine tar, 100%. Anyway, there's the soap. That's a good one. It was gifted to me. Um, I have uh, Sterling Texas on Fire. We're going to use that as the aftershave today. And it seemed like I had another one. I can't remember. Anyway, so let's see how the West Coast shaving does. Looks like a good lather. But it's already starting to get bubbles and things here. I think that's the problem I have with it. I even over overloaded it today. To uh... give it a chance. So the handle on this razor is very similar to the um, Star Lather Catcher handles, uh, where it's got the bumps on it, two, pe uh, two pieces, and then the stropping mechanism slides into the bottom one. <clears throat> Her brand company, uh, it's a trademark name, I think it was... Um, Back in 1800 and something for cutlery items. And then they started using it again in the uh, late 1920s for razors. is in Fremont, Ohio, or was. So these, uh, this soap from West Coast Shaving, not the best soap, not very slick. Doesn't necessarily feel good on the skin or anything. Kind of drying, but it's a killer scent. <laughs> Especially if you're going to be camping or something. I've got some work outside today. Our uh, place of worship that I attend is going in person again. Uh, hybrid meetings will be in person and on Zoom, which we've been doing since the pandemic. But just being extra precautious for everybody's safety. Anyway, going in person now, and so I've got some yard work and things trimming to do for them. <clears throat> so since I'm working outside, I thought it's a good scent to use, kind of answer uh, Joao's, uh, Joao's comment, question. So this would absolutely be the worst soap that I have in my den to lather. <clears throat> As you can see, it's a... Looks like a satisfactory lather and everything. It's just not a great soap. So if anyone's having trouble, getting good consistent lathers,
biggest, the best recommendation I can give, overload the soap. Not the most comfortable shave, but we're getting a very good shave so far. I'm taking things down. Some of the comfort issue could be the soap too. Feeling the the edge where these tra where the tray comes up on the clear this to hold the blade the tray on the side here where it comes up on the front of that lip I keep feeling that grab. So looking in weights compendium, which um, as I said, uh, someone commented on I I use it a lot. I like it. And I like having the paper one versus the electronic. I know there's an electronic one. Um, I've heard people have trouble downloading pictures from it. I'm not great with technology. As can be seen by my videos, it's why I don't edit them. I just point, shoot, upload. <clears throat> So when I looked in weights um, for her brand, got the information on uh, the company. They had pictures of two razors. One looks like the head for mine, but with a one piece handle and a larger box. And then there was a picture of another. The head might be a little different. I couldn't tell. And again, a longer box. And I saw that one actually on eBay. <clears throat> and I had it in my watch list to consider. I didn't know if it was the same, it was worth getting. And I thought, oh, maybe I will, because it's like 24 bucks or something like that. And I got busy working. I didn't watch it. It sold. And I think it went for like $26. I should have got it. And I would have been able to see the difference if there were any in the model so you'll find these occasionally come up a lot of razors i've gotten have been <clears throat> from collectors older gentlemen that are um, getting older and slowly selling ones they've collected over the years. What I've learned is uh, there's these people that have these <laughs> great razors in collections and they shave with cartridge razors. At least one I've talked to in particular, he and from what I can tell when I spoke with him on the phone, Uh, these collectors are just literally collectors to display. Yeah, it's all that lather's just getting thin, bubbly, <clears throat> and would dissipate if I didn't. If I really slowed down shaving. Anyway, so that's when these come available. Razors such as this and others is when uh, collectors are uh, getting older or deciding to get out of the collecting and uh, they start letting them go. Problem is, what I've seen is when they were collecting, some of them I guess felt it was an investment too, I don't know. 
and they're learning that they're not getting more than or they're not going for more than what they paid for them when they got them even or they're realizing individuals like me that are actually getting them to shave with and not for collector value <clears throat> not willing to pay a fortune for them what they're asking Case in point, there's several razors from someone I bought from. And he doesn't accept offers, he has a set price and he just keeps relisting them and they don't sell. I just keep putting them on my watch list in case the price comes down. but. So I keep, I can feel it catching. I've got this scar right here and I got a nick there. <clears throat> this soap is hydrated, but drying out and it's not, not getting the whiskers hydrated enough for this against the grain pass. Old man, white wire whiskers. I don't want to make that spot worse there. So I'm not forcing my way through it. Much as I love this scent, it's just not a soap I reach for because of this reason. So back to what I was saying about the uh, razor. So. I keep watching ones like that, but then occasionally you'll see someone else post the same razor for a reasonable price. And that's when I'll try to grab it. Eventually these other people will uh, become more reasonable <clears throat> with what they have. Um, I don't think there are people that are collecting per se, like they were collecting anymore. And so that's why they're not seeing things go for the prices in general. Some certain razors will demand and still get those prices. Like if you see a Darwin razor, yes, there's one on eBay right now for just under $500. I remember years ago seeing one for sale for 150 i'm like i'm not paying 150 dollars for a razor boy i wish i bought that those things go for over a thousand usually now so so some will demand that but in general razors from a collection are not going to demand the prices um, or get the prices because there are not as many people that are collecting for the sake of collecting uh, the ones like me are collecting because I like the old ones, the vintage and what I call antique because they're older than vintage like Gillette's. And uh, I like using them. So I'm not paying a fortune to have a ton of razors to use that are mostly sit um, because I can grab whatever one I want at any particular time and I like the history of it. <clears throat> so in a sense, I'm a collector, but not like them for you know, investment value. So, I watch for the better deals. I have to find a, a yard sale or estate sale or something like that. And I don't really hunt as much anymore with as many as I have. Where are we at? Almost 20 minutes. So there you have it. That's the Herbrand razor. And a simple little cardboard box like this here. And, uh, Let's see, we were going to top off with some Sterling Texas on Fire. I've got a couple hours before I have to head over there. Oh, nice.
I sent to go work outside. Dave in Kentucky, be kind to each other, uh, be safe, and uh, have a great day. We'll see you on the pages.